what we want to do is talk about anxiety disorders and depression and make all this stuff relevant uh, with respect to those uh, dynamics. And I want to underline one of these, this Yerkes-Dobson -Do uh, inverted U curve is so critical. And I know I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I say, look, you're going to have to do things you don't feel like doing to make some changes because it's like a broken record. What you've got is a repetitive pattern here, either it's anxiety or depression. We've got to get you to do stuff you don't feel like doing. You're withdrawing, and I often say, you're getting your right prefrontal cortex overactivated. You want to withdraw. You want the big picture is overwhelming to you. That means we need to get you doing stuff. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be anxiety provoking, but that's a good thing because we can't get any neuroplasticity going unless we get some anxiety provoked here. Fritz Perls used to say, you need a safe emergency to get some dynamics going. The same concept here, safe emergency means you got an alliance there, but you need to push them. You can't have them sitting around talking endlessly in a Woody Allen uh, fashion about their neuroses and their little uh, quips and qualms about this or that. So, with respect to, we were talking about CBT and BBT. Uh, well, certainly core beliefs. We want to work with narratives. We want people to be thinking about how they describe their life to themselves. That involves the cortex. So I say, yeah, that's right. We're rewiring some narratives here. We're rewiring basically how you think about what happened to you and how you got into this rut that you are. But that's not the end of it. That's insight. Insight's only as good as knowing how you got here. What we need to do is wire your way out of here. So I'm going to go straight to anxiety and describe how uh, uh, CBT works, how medications work. What we have going on with CBT, and this is an imaging study uh, Lloyd mentioned, uh, Zindel Siegel from Toronto, who we invited to our uh, uh, conference last year, found that with CBT, what you have is sort of a top-down process occurring. With SSRIs, when they do work, and oftentimes they don't, uh, up to about 60% do work, uh, you have a bottom-up uh, process uh, going. So you want to activate and certainly uh, make more vital the hippocampal area. Psychoanalysis is certainly in, in context here too because, you know, in many ways, what is the transference relationship? It's an alliance that you're working through dynamics and you're, you know, whether or not you call a person, you know, in the, the dynamic between the two of you, part objects or self objects, nevertheless, you're still talking about changing the experience of being with another person and moving into an area that is really uncharted and they, they're going to be anxious. Let's, let's talk about how mindfulness relates to this. If you, in fact, I was talking about it last night with my anxiety uh, group. If you activate your uh, prefrontal cortex and specifically your dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, meaning that you got in working memory a here and now presence. Anxiety is all about the future. Depression is all about the past. If you're in the presence and you're, you are in the here and now, you in a sense pull away from tripping out about the future or ruminating about the past. You want to evaporate those extensions because you aren't in the present. So we go through exercises and we make relevant why it is important for you to pay attention to the present. So last night I had uh, my anxiety group do a mindfulness exercise. And I said, well, look, what we're doing is we're just going to get you present with walking at the moment. Why? Because I want you to pay attention to being here right now because you're too worried about whether or not you're going to get anxious and ruminating about how bad things have been for you. And in that way, we get a top-down observant quality in the prefrontal cortex being activated. We invited Helen Mayberg uh, out uh, two years ago, and she's the one that's been doing uh, deep brain stimulation. The only reason I'm bringing her up right now, and this area, the anterior cingulate, is that certain areas of your brain get caught and stuck. 
And what she did was stimulate this area called Area 25 in the brain, which was sort of a central circuit for rumination and air attention. And by going in and stimulating that area, she took it offline so the prefrontal cortex could get activated. So it was actually less active. Eventually, less active after the attention was able to be employed to get the hippocampus working.